am so glad to always be in the presence of the Lord, especially with like believers. Um, so let us pray really quick. Father, we thank you for the awesome worship moment, the moment that you've created for us in time. So Father, we ask that any hindrances that have been placed in front of your people, that they shall speak to those mountains and they will be removed. Father, be with us in this service and through this message. And I pray that everything that is spoken, Father, of your spirit, you allow your people who are called by your voice to hear the message and prepare themselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So Joshua, I'm not as good as your daddy. So I may need you your help a little bit, okay? So if I say turn, you just turn the page. Um, so we're gonna try to get through this. It's a, a long kind of lesson that the Lord gave me, but I think it's definitely needed to be said in this hour. I do have two disclaimers. Number one is, I believe the whole Bible and everything that's in there and what the Bible calls sin, I call sin. So don't take it personal. And it may offend you, but don't take it personal because it's the word. Um, and number two, disclaimer number two, I'm actually gonna read from a book that I've always adored and that's the book of Revelation. And throughout the years I've learned that there are so many theologians that have spent many a years practicing and studying out all the different symbols and everything that happened in the book of Revelation. But how many of us know that that's the same thing that the Pharisees did when it came to Jesus and the Messiah being born? They could not accept him because they knew that they had already mapped out the day and the hour that he would show up and how he would show up. So they missed it. They missed it because they held on to all of their studies that they believe in their prophecies that they believe was going to come to pass. I see this book of Revelation the same way. We may, it may not look exactly like you see it in, in, in the book of Revelation, but just be open-minded and allow the Spirit of God to just kind of open you up to new information when it comes to this particular book. So don't judge me, you theologians and Bible students who've been to seminary and cemeteries. <laughs> just know that um, if it's not of God, trust me, he'll fix it, he'll correct it. <laughs> correct it. All right, so the word that God gave me, and I think it's so rele relevant for this hour that we're in. Um, the title is The Rise of the Remnant. The Rise of the Remnant. And so in order to go through this book, we're going to use scripture to interpret scripture and whatever else God gives us, we'll go from there. Amen? Okay, so let's see. Revelation 13 through 15. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of her mouth. We're going to focus on Revelation 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept the commandments of God 
and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. For the sake of making things easy to understand, I'm going to focus on this one verse only. And I'm going to try to point out five things that's highlighted in verse 17. Number one is the remnant of her seed, the dragon that was wroth, the war that was made, and those that kept the commandment of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, I'm a kid sometimes, I like pictures, like my pastor did. <laughs> in order to understand this book, in my opinion, it starts with understanding the key characters. So we see the first character we have is the dragon, the woman, and then the child. The book of Revelation and end time prophecy can be difficult to understand, especially if we take it literal. I've learned that most dreams and visions are symbolic and need to be interpreted. The book of Revelation is written to explain what happens before, during, and after the return of Jesus Christ. I believe John wanted to encourage Christians to live righteous and holy lives to challenge unbelievers about the judgment ahead if they reject Christ. So let's look at the dragon. Remember, we're going to use scripture to interpret scripture. So in scripture, it says that the dragon, Revelation 12, so the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now the woman, this is kind of difficult to understand but I tried to make it as simple as possible. Israel represents, the woman represents Israel. Israel represents the church. In the New Testament, God's church is symbolized as a woman. Clearly the woman is Israel giving birth to the Messiah. He is her, he is, he's offering, her spiritual offsprings are the sons and daughters she brought forth through Christ. So Paul says in Galatians, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and you are heirs according to the promise. Now, of course, this one is pretty obvious. It is Jesus, and he is the child. The woman is described as giving birth to a male child who was to rule all the nations with the rod of iron. Revelation 5 says, she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. The verse continues, and her child was caught up to God and her throne. This language here makes it very clear that Jesus is the child that John is speaking about in this book. So, since we know the characters and we see the scene being laid out, so we got a woman, a child, and an angry dragon that represents Satan. So what then is the remnant of her seed? 1 Kings 19. Well, let's, let's first look at the word remnant. The concept of a remnant is found throughout scriptures. A remnant is defined as a small surviving group of people. It's sometimes defined as something that's left over. It re references God's people. It means those who are faithful to his original truth despite the great falling away and any opposition. Throughout the course of history of mankind, God has always left the remnant. In the days of prophet Elijah, God let it be known that he had left a remnant. Elijah thought the nation of Israel had totally departed from God. But God informed Elijah in 1 Kings 
and he says, Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel whose knees have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. And again, during the prophet, the days of prophet Elijah, God gave a vision to Israel, uh, to Elijah, and he says to Isaiah, unless the Lord of hosts has left a very small remnant, we would become like Sodom. We would have been like Gomorrah. Isaiah went on to say in verse 9, let me go there, hold on one second. No, I'm there, okay. All right. All right, so those are the Old Testament versions of the remnant. So let's look at what God said in the New Testament about the remnant. Remember, this is always defined as a small surviving group of people. It's not the masses, it's a small surviving group of people. So Paul says in the New Testament, he actually called himself a member of the remnant of Israel. And he says, Romans 11 and 5. Even so, then, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Romans 9 and 27, he says, Isaiah also cries out concerning Israel. Though the number of children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant will be saved. I hope <laughs> I hope you've got, by these scriptures alone I hope y'all identify are clearly able to see who the remnant is so let's talk about this for a second let's talk about why the angry the dragon was so angry wroth with this woman why why was he so wroth with the remnant why Scripture is very clear here in Revelation 12, and that's what's up there. And it says, a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels, angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that, old, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Clearly, we can see he's angry because he was defeated. He also got some workers with him that are called demonic spirits and so they are all fallen angels. Being that he was not successful in his attempt to kill the woman and her child, he now turns his attention to you, the remnant. He now goes forth with an intensified effort to persecute the saints of the living God. So I'm, this next slide that I'm going to show you, I thought it was very interesting. And though this, this picture depicts a falling angel, but the next slide I'm going to put up, I want you to see something before I move on to my next topic, my next um, sub, subject line. This picture is a picture of an angel being cast from heaven, per se. Now I want, you to sh I want to show you something really quick, and only because God highlighted this to me during my study time. What does that look like? That's Disney. The beloved Disney. Not Disney. Not using the queen. So, when I saw this, the first thing I said was the devil is not hiding. He's not hiding. They are recreating the stories of the falling angels in the Bible right in front of our faces and presenting them to our kids.
So let's talk about how he persecutes and makes war with the remnant. Now, Revelation 13 says, it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And the authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. When I saw this scripture, one of the three reasons and uh, methods I believe that the enemy uses to weaken the church is division, number one, isolation of believers, and complacency. Now clearly, we all can see division. There was a big split during this political season. So we absolutely know that the enemy was involved and that was one of his methods that he was using to persecute the remnant. He was causing division like never before. And it was clear across the nation. I mean, the numbers, even every news channel has, has said it. There is a split in our nation. Scripture tells us this is part of the persecution. This division was brought on to make war, bring war with the remnant. Some of us still can't go back to our churches. Now that causes the believer to be isolated. Do we not see the isolation that has happened? He has gone after this woman. Not only has he divided her in the nation, he has also now caused her remnant seed to be isolated. She's now isolated and alone. God never called us to walk this journey alone. The more that we are not in, in, included in one another's walk and journey, the more and the long and the, the further away we get from the word of God. So this isolation that is happening, it is part of the enemy's plan. It's in scripture. He's persecuting this woman and the remnant of her seed. This weakens the church and makes us vulnerable and powerless. Now, complacency. Now, to me, this is one of the most dangerous methods that the enemy is using. And as I go over this, I want you to ask yourself, have you succumbed to the culture of complacency? And I'm going to speak to the church, especially those who voted for Trump right now. Just because your desire politician did not take office does not give you the right to take a break nor does it give you the right to stop prophesying get over it <laughs> get over it it's all a part of the plan it's a tool it's a weapon he's using it to make war with the remnant because when we come complacent, guess what happened? Do y'all remember Matt, Matt Crotch from TVN? Yeah. So, first let's look at what the scripture says about complacency. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem. Complacency. Who say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, nor he do evil. So y'all yeah, think God is up there chilling, like he don't care what's going on. That's not the case. They are definitely unpopular. 
because the dragon is warring against them. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That means you may be a part of cancel culture. They may have to cancel you out. You may not be able to upload the busted challenge on your social media. You may not be able to do that. I'm serious. You, you just can't because you're a part of the remnant. The remnant cannot do the busted challenge. I'm sorry. You cannot. Those who stand on God's word and not the word of man, nor politicians, nor media, but you keep the commandments of God. If you love me, keep my commandments. They also have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 19 and 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is defined as the spirit of prophecy, meaning that Jesus is witnessing to the church through the, uh, the uh, vehicle of prophecy. When Jesus was here, he was able to prophesy for himself. Now, he uses his prophecy, his prophets, to do his work. So why do you think the gift of prophecy, the prophetic ministry, is under attack right now? We just saw the division. We just saw the isolation. We saw the complacency. We saw the weapons that he used. This is one of the weapons. The prophets got it wrong. The prophets got it wrong. The prophets got it wrong. It reminds me of when they was teasing um, Elijah in the Bible. <laughs> the, I mean, come on. It, it's not to, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The war is not on the prophet. The war is against Jesus. It's against the spirit of prophecy that rests in his remnant seeds. Do not allow people to tell you who you should listen to and who you should follow. As the remnant, if they are not testifying the spirit of Jesus, you cannot be a part of, yeah, you cannot follow them. You cannot be a part of their Instagram page. You cannot be a part of their Facebook groups. Why? Because those same demonic spirits end, ends up influencing you. There is no way you would be able to resist it. We are in the last days. And the Bible says, you will have to have a keen sense of discernment to survive. So that means you're going to have to clear out your ear gate, your eye gate, and everything that comes out of your mouth. Because the minute you turn on your, your busted challenge music, you've opened the door for a spirit to come in that's going to confuse you. So when you hop on such and such live and she tell you something that your spirit cannot recognize, you automatically think she's a false prophet or he's a false prophet. 
because you're not living at a, a, a level high enough spiritually to recognize what is coming from the Father. You're living too low, and I'm going to use y'all language, you're vibrating too low. Your energy level is too low. You're vibrating too low. So you can't recognize prophetic words that's coming from the throne room. Fallen angels don't waste their time with low vibrating uh, frequencies. They don't. Popularity does not mean that the person has the word of the Lord in their mouth. And I got alive to prove it. He showed it to me over the summer. Preachers will push the vaccine. Do not allow any pastor, preacher, or teacher to encourage you about your health. This should be a decision that you need to take straight to the Father. If God has not told you to get a vaccine, I don't care if the most influential preacher on the face of this earth have a whole conference with the top doctors, leaders, and all the elites. If the Lord has not told you to get a vaccine, if the Lord has not told you that this was safe for your body, do not allow the influence of social media and those who have bought into the agenda. Because remember, it's a small group. It's a small group. The small group don't look different. They just don't look different. It was a reason Jesus only had a remnant with him while he walked on earth. There was a reason. He touched many lives, but he only kept a small group with him. So just because they got 10.5K followers, it don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. No, absolutely nothing. If anything, to me, it's always a sign. I'm always like, oh, he must be on some mess. <laughs> he must be on some mess. I'm serious. Do not allow. And I know that we're very, not, let me take that back. The enemy has used fear to help push these agendas. And that some people are really afraid of dying. I'm not absent from the body to be present with the Lord. It is what it is. I'll be ready to meet my maker. <laughs> some people are afraid of death. And because they are, they're looking for ways to avoid it. So they will run to take a vaccine. Let me give you some facts about the vaccine that I really want you, and this was not included in my notes at all, so it, the Holy Spirit wants me to deal with this. The vaccine has not been approved by CDC as being something that will cure COVID-19. It has been approved to be used for an emergency situation like a pandemic. The guidelines for approval are totally different. Do your research. The two common vaccine distributors now are using new technology. Those vaccines are not made like the last vaccines that we're used to getting. They're using new technology that hasn't been tested. You are the test subjects. They're testing this on you. So you join some of these groups, you see the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. You see people do their lives and give you updates about their, it, it don't matter. You know, when these things are in, in labs and they're tested on animals, you got some dead animals and you got some that survive. Just because you see a person go live and tell you their journey about the vaccine and they're healthy and everything's good, does not mean that's the same thing that's going to happen to you. So your father is the creator of your body and your DNA. You need to go to him and say, God, she survived. But will I 
survive? Will I be cutting my time here on earth short because I followed what somebody told me? Will I be sick after this? It's even worse you survive with a deadly illness that you can't even manage. So please keep that in mind, you guys. Do not allow, I don't care if they black, white, or indifferent. If they tell you to get a vaccine, number one, you need to get out of their church. And number two, you need to take it to the Father in prayer. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is prophecy. This gift is an identifying mark of the remnant church. This is why it's under attack. The church is still going to prophesy. <laughs> I don't care if they got it right or they got it wrong. They still going to prophesy. It's a wonder we see this gift under attack. So, if you're saying to yourself, well, am I a part of the remnant? Do I actually believe that and have the testimony of Jesus Christ? Am I living like that? Can I de defeat Satan when he actually shows up? There's a scripture, and let me pull it up really quick because it's not in my notes. But it's in Proverbs, uh, where is it? Proverbs 22 and 3. And it says, a prudent man, which means a wise man, foresees the evil and he hides himself. But the simple pass on and they are punished. If God has given you eyes to see in this season, and not the third eye, we close every third eye that the enemy has opened for you. Every demonic gift that you done tapped into by, with your crystals and your meditation, we close the door in the realm, the demonic realm, because you could prophesy out of a demonic realm. You can prophesy the devil's agenda. Because remember, they're fallen angels. So they have an agenda. You can prophesy from demonic realms. But if you, the Bible says, if you're a wise man and you see evil, he hides himself. We are hidden in the shadow of the Almighty so that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. And you'll be marked with the seal of God in this hour. Do not allow yourself to get complacent in this season. Just because a transition of power has happened, everything in this word still has to come to pass. Bible prophecy must be fulfilled. And the fact checkers can fact check it. Because it's true. It's in the word of God. He is the absolute truth. We can all be a personal witness for Christ. Romans 10, 9 through 10 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with your heart one believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation.
If you think you're a part of the remnant, see, I did it. <laughs> Pastor didn't think I could do it within an hour. <laughs> if you think you're a part of the remnant, let's go back. All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. You shall be saved. So I'm going to pray us out. And what I want to pray about is I want to pray about the remnant. I want her to be able to recognize persecution, recognize spiritual wickedness in high places, coming to make war with the remnant of her seed. So Father, this morning we thank you. We thank you for the word that you brought forth in this hour. I pray that every ear that has an opportunity to hear what the Spirit is saying will listen to what thus says the Lord and prepare for the persecution that is coming. Father, those of us who have been sealed by your mark, help us to remember that we are to remain faithful to you in this hour despite what it looks like even when the enemy looks like he's won we remember that in the end we win Satan knows his time is coming to an end that's the only reason he's making war with her remnant he wants to take as many souls with him as possible. But on this day, God, we're asking that you snatch them out of the hands of the enemy and that every weapon formed in their lives to keep them bound to demonic influences. I'm asking that you break it now in the name of Jesus, that you will prepare them for what is to come in this hour. Prepare them for the war that is on the body of Christ, for the war that is on the remnant of her seed. Father, for every person that is watching, that hasn't made a decision to serve you, I'm asking that you would deal with their hearts, that you would show them that you and you alone are the only way no matter what anybody says there's only one way to the true and living God and that is that through Jesus Christ the one who died on the cross for my sins and your sins so we thank you Father that you would go across the airways and every call to repentance will be heard that the church, your remnant, those of us who aren't saved, but they're still a part of the remnant, God, your spirit, draw them in in this hour. Draw them in. Draw them in. Draw them closer to you. It's by your goodness that you draw us to repentance. So, Father, we bless your name. We thank you that those that need to be saved will say the prayer of salvation. They will remember the scripture and that they will give their life to you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Go give her another hand. That was, that was awesome. Yeah, you knocked it out and, and you knocked it out. I'm like, 19 slides? She knocked all 19 of them out. It was good. So um, we're going to go ahead and, uh, man, that's, that's an everlasting gospel. That's an everlasting gospel. That's something that you can listen to forever. 
If you take that same stuff that she just said and apply it 30 years from now, it'll still apply. It'll still produce. So that's that's right, and that's why I think when God sends people to like, like how she was talking about these different churches, you got to make sure they're like-minded. That's why I think God gives us people who have like-minded because we feed off each other. You know, that fed me. That fed me, and. I hope God feed you all, but we feed each other. And my point is we, and I hate to sound clickish when I say this, we produce after our own kind. You know? It sounds bad, but it's the truth. It's like we, we're not a click, but we all kind of the same kind of people. Same thing she's talking about, we, we ride along with you. We're not like, I don't know what she's talking about. No, no, we all the same over here. Yeah, we all got our own little, a different flavor, but we all saying the same thing. And I think when it comes to the church as a whole, we all got to be saying the same thing. We may, we may look a little different. We may, some people may have a little traditional thing to, yeah, you know, hooping out, yeah. But, but we ought to be saying the same thing. Every church should be saying stuff like that. So I think it's, it's um, the remnant needs to wake up, and, and I love that title, they need to rise. The remnant needs to rise. It may not be a whole lot of us, but one can chase away a thousand, two can chase away ten thousand. All you need is a little bit. The Bible says those twelve disciples that Jesus had turned the world upside down. So I'd rather be a part of the small group that would turn the world upside down. So, so that's great. That's great. Y'all give her another hand. We're raising up some good ministers here, aren't we? Dear God, I love this church. If I wasn't the pastor here, I would join this church. This is a cool church. We get to grow and we get to develop and we get to preach the gospel and just be ourselves. I can tell you were just yourself. You weren't trying to be like anybody else. Me and my wife was talking about, I hate to be rambling, but me and my wife were just talking about that yesterday, about sometimes in the church we're, we produce clones after each other. And that's, that's not... It's not good. I mean, you, we all seen the little videos when the guys can imitate another celebrity. It can sound just like them. Sound just like them. But ain't nobody going to pay to see that person. I mean, you give them a little likes and thumbs ups and some comments. Oh, that was cool. But the original person is who they're going to go see. They're not going to look for an imitation. And my charge to you all as we build churches and we come up in ministry, identify yourself and be you when you minister. Okay, so um, good example, my sister, very good example. We heard 19 slides. I do five and six, but she did 19. And I'm like, wow, I need to learn. I need to learn from that. But that was great.